You're not bringing them in. I'm warning you what's happening in Europe is going to happen here, only it's going to happen even more vigorously. Because even the head of the intelligence services in this country is telling us, we don't know who they are. We don't know who these people are. We can't vet them. We don't know where, where they're coming from or what they want to do. I've, I've told you the story. I told you the story. I read you the story about the invasion. I told you what their plans are. I told you it has a name. It's called Hijra, H-I-J-R-I-H, the English translation of the Arabic. A grand strategy that the liberal socialist leaders in the United States and Europe do not understand or don't want you to know about. It's about the overrunning of our lands. Ask yourself why Saudi Arabia, UAE, Oman, etc. will not take in any, any of these so-called refugees. Huh? How come Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Oman, and others will not take in any of these poor refugees while the moron Merkel, the new fascist leader of Germany, the socialist green leader of Germany, the fascist dictator who is spitting in the faces of the Germans saying annihilate your culture in the name of what? Liberal socialism? How come Saudi Arabia, Muslim country, UAE, Muslim country, Oman, Muslim country, will not take in these Muslims? Because they know what Hijra is. They know exactly what Hijra is. It's jihad by emigration. It means moving to a new land in order to bring Islam there and overrun them. And I spell it out again in my great document, my last and final book in the series, Government Zero. I was in a restaurant last night with Teddy and my assistant. A little place I go to where everyone leaves everyone alone. And I brought two copies of my new book. I just gotten one for the owner, Roger, and for his son, Patrick, who I've known for 40 years. They were wonderful people. They created a piece of civilization, European civilization in the middle of nowhere. You know, you go there. Sometimes you fly over America. And you look down at the lights, don't you, over these vast areas that are uninhabited, largely uninhabited, and you see a twinkle of a few lights, right? And you, you feel like a visitor from another planet looking down on your own land. And you realize down there there are lights and electricity and civilization, the warmth and the culture of our nation. And you, you see it sometimes in a quiet little inn somewhere, don't you? A little piece of America. And it's increasingly disappearing. I go there and I sit there and I took out the books and I started to sign them over. And I heard a, a, a lady at another table mentioning my name and I said, all right, what are you going to do? You know, I'm a public figure, I hide out a little bit here and there. She said, I hope I don't disturb you, Mr. Savage. I just want you to know that I listen to your show every day. I wait for it to go on. I cannot wait. I ordered your book on Amazon and I'm going to Barnes & Noble the day the, the book comes out. I'm going to buy several copies for my family. And I said, thank you very much. So I know the message is getting across, and I'm not worried about whether my book is going to sell or whether it's going to be a bestseller or for how many weeks. It doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is that the message gets out there. That's the message I'm trying to get across to you. Sometimes a document comes along or a book comes along that changes the course of human events. There were books along the way that did it. I told you about them, like Rachel, I uh, forget her name, The Silent Spring in the 60s. That, that was a book that revolutionized people's view of the environment. She pointed out what... Rachel Carson, thank you, Jim. I remember I was a young kid, and the, the book's title alone said it all. The Silent Spring. I didn't read it at the time. I was a kid, 18 years old. What did I care about politics? The Silent Spring, and it, it dawned on me, wow, that title has said it all. That unless we stop poisoning the earth with DDT and other organic, organophosphor, organophosphorus pesticides, trying to get my chemistry right, <laughs> unless we stop poisoning the, the earth with organophosphorus pesticides, the birds will die and we'll have a silent spring. Even I, as an unsophisticated young teenager, understood that. The book became a raging bestseller because it had a message that was right for its time. And I believe government zero, no borders, no language, no culture, is exactly like Silent Spring. It's about a nation that will die unless we stop poisoning the body politic, <clears throat> body politic with this progressivism, period. And I'll stop right there and be back to take your calls right here.
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Everybody, are you freaked out by the chaos that you see around you, the shootings, the madness, the insanity, the, the night, day, or, day and night partying? The degenerates of Hollywood glorified as cultural heroes, while decent moral people like yourselves are denigrated by the Larry Davids of the world, by Katzenberg, Hatzenberg, Matzenberg, Ratzenberg. Are you sick of it? Do you feel like vomiting every time you see these people? Do you feel like vomiting out the filth and pollution they're putting in your children's heads? Are you sick and tired of the drugs they're putting in little Johnny's brain to subdue his masculinity? and turn him into a little nothing? Are you wondering why people are going off like skyrockets? They can't take it anymore from the top down? You're not alone. You're the majority, you're the silenced majority. You are not what was once called the silent majority. You are the silenced majority. And it's because of the few shows left in the world like mine that you're not silent anymore. But I can't do this forever, it's that simple. You know, I've done this since 1994, 21 years. You know any other show that lasts this long with this level of intensity? There's one show on radio that's lasted longer than mine, but it's, it's burned itself out a long time ago. It has no intensity whatsoever. It's like an incandescent bulb whose filament is shot. And it's running off the, uh, the light that was left, the ambient light that was left in the bulb a long time ago. I still burn as hot as I did in 1994, but I can't do it much longer. It's not like I've gone to the mountain and seen the other side, but let me tell you something. I'm very close to the end of this journey. I know it. I feel it. I sense it. I can sense it every day. I don't want to say it even. It gets me freaked out. That's it. That's it. The journey is coming to a conclusion. And all I can do is try to leave you with the, the, the warnings and words that I think are valid. That's as simple as that. I give it to you every way I can, through humor, education, anger. Rage. Rage against these people. I've never seen such low lives in my life in such high places. I've never seen such corruption in my lifetime. I live in San Francisco, the most corrupt city in the world. I've never seen anything like it. You have a sheriff in this city wearing the uniform of the sheriff who could not fire a gun straight and fired the range master of a pistol range because he would not let him take the pistol test because he didn't know if he was allowed to do it, and he fired him, and he's still a sheriff. That's after a domestic violence abuse case. Solar contracts to politicians' relatives that you would see in a banana republic in Uruguay, not mentioned by the Nun newspaper, controlled by a few gangs. Oh, they wear nice suits and ties, Brioni suits. Nothing but the best white shirts and seven hundred dollar ties. Government zero. I'm Michael Savage. Government zero. Never forget it. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. Eight five five four hundred Savage. Eight five five four hundred seven two eight two. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, the Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Blue Monday. It is the Savage Nation, hour number three. I would say I've given you your money's worth if you've listened from the beginning of the show. And now it's time to cool down the roller coaster. If you want to call the show, this will be the hour to get on it, 855 407 I'm not going to summarize what I did in the first two hours. I'd rather you go and find it somewhere, like on YouTube or whatever. I can't redo everything I do. Just know that the chaos in this world that you are experiencing 
the madness of the world uh, is real. It's not imagined. You're not mentally deranged. And that the leadership or the lack thereof is what's causing it. And that the refugee crisis in particular of Muslims flooding into Europe is a disaster of an untold proportions caused by Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama. Two of the worst possible leaders in the history of this country have caused the destruction of Libya, which has led to the massive refugee crisis. And the, down, the, down, uh, the downside of all of this is that they wanted to do the same thing to Syria that they did to Libya. And the only one who stopped them so far is Vladimir Putin. Just, just be very clear about what exactly is going on in the world. Don't get confused. Don't, don't be confused by the synagogue jesters like Larry David, those who mock everything decent. Not for one minute should you be de deceived by Saturday night uh, uh, stoned. They're not trying to educate you or entertain you. They're trying to deceive you. They keep you laughing at the Bernie Sanders imitations because they're not mocking his policies. They're mocking his underwear. So you don't even look at his policies. You get it? That's how it works. Lou on WABC, go ahead, please. You're up on the program. What's on your mind? Michael, your first 15 minutes should be played in every classroom in this country. Although the poor kids will be, you know, be crumbling underneath their desks because they, they're not used to hearing a real man. They're not used to hearing a man with a deep... Lou, I don't, which, which hour do you mean? Hour one or hour two? Is it the last hour? Hour one. The first 15 minutes, you were on fire when you came on the air. And I told your call screener, you know what? I'm buying four books. You want to know why? Every one of your listeners should buy a couple of books. The holiday season is coming. Hand them out. Give them to people you know. Give them to your family and friends. Let them know what's going on. Let them know about Government Zero. And, you know, as far as what you said in those first 15 minutes, Michael, I, I told my mother, I left the house, I came to my own home, and, I'm, and I, I told her before I left, this guy just did more in 15 minutes than Limbaugh has done in 15 years. And you just well, said it. I can't comment on anyone else in the radio business for obvious reasons, but the fact of the matter is I do what I have to do the best way I know how to do it. I hear in your voice that you heard the message. You know that we're down at the last the last uh, hurrah here. This is it. This is the last battle. Either we stop this invasion or we're finished. There'll be no nation left. It's that simple. You know, I'm going to hear from the other side, oh, you know, he's the son of an immigrant, that savage. He really should know better. These Muslims coming in from Syria, Libya, Africa are no different than his grandfather. They're just like Albert Einstein. They're all like, they're all uh, Albert Einstein. They just didn't have a chance. Isn't that what they're going to say? Well, that amongst all of these refugees, no matter, even though their religion is different and their, their race is different, they're just like Albert Einstein and Albert St. Georgie and uh, all of the other emig emigres that came from Europe in the early 1900s. Are they just like them? Do you think that there's an Albert Einstein amongst them? Western Europe is crumbling, and you know, we should have been blessed with Michael Savage before the other guy that I just mentioned. Because I understand when you knock someone, it's a boost. I understand that. But you know what? You should be the standard bearer. You should be the one dictating the dialogue in this country instead of what the media does to him, and they lampoon him because he's become a caricature of himself. But you're the guy. Oh, who boy, do you got it, man. You sure see what's going on. You know what the odd part? You hear me ridicule Hollywood on a regular basis because they are the ones who can s help save this, the whole Western world. If you take the genius of Steven Spielberg, Katzenberg, Hatzenberg, Matzenberg, Ratzenberg, Geffen, and they put their genius thinking heads together, and they say, you know what? we got to do something to alert the world to the dangers of radical Islam or, all, or we're all dead. You realize what they could do, don't you, in marshalling public opinion, right? Oh, absolutely. And you know something odd? I will wage a bet, and there's no way to ever prove whether I'm right or wrong, that the mothers of these men listen to this show. I would bet you that Harvey Weinstein's mother probably is a devout fan of this show, wherever she may live. I can guarantee you that if any of them, any of the others still have parents who are alive, they listen to me and they try to tell their young son, their son who's not so young anymore, listen to him. The man knows what he's talking about, Harvey. What's wrong with you? Why do you attack everything decent about this country, Harvey, when it's given you so much? Harvey, what's the matter? And he probably laughs at his mother and calls her a senile old woman. Michael, I, That's, I have to tell you. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just projecting what I think is going on. At Hollywood, there's an anomaly that took place in the past few months. There's a movie out called The Intern, whereby you could take your 8-year-old daughter or your 80-year-old mother and not be embarrassed. It actually has value in it. 
the, the lead character plays a gentleman, talks about reasons why he carries a handkerchief, because you ca a man carries a handkerchief to give it to a woman when she has tears, not to hand over to Joe Biden, or, or Boehner, rather, when he has his tears. And it, and it mentions how he shaves every day, and how he's clean-cut, etc., etc. And he's about a 70-year-old man in the movie.